Town of Brookfield Select Board meeting Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. Please stand to pledge flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, so just so everyone knows, we are being recorded and live streamed. Uh, anyone else recording? Are you guys recording? Yep. Anyone else? Uh, announcements. So today marks 23 years since the September 11th, 2001 terror attacks that forever changed the nation. I'd like to please pause for a moment of silence for the 2,983 people that were killed when hijackers crashed four jetliners into the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and the field in southwest Pennsylvania. So because Beth's not here yet, we're gonna take things a bit out of motion. Um, we'll start with, is that her? All right. <laughs> we won't start things out of motion, out of uh, order. Apologies. That's all right. Yeah, sure, if you wanna. I'm gonna recuse myself based on the topic. Yeah. So, host community agreement, Sun Fusions, marijuana licensing, discuss and vote to endorse manufacturing host community agreement. Okay. So, and what we've got here. I was going to say, I can kind of explain Once it. Because sure. yeah, there, yep. there, there's many different copies of uh, several different agreements. Uh, first one uh, that should not be marked draft is the uh, host community uh, agreement for the manufacturing facility. Uh, that's the one that we had discussed. Uh, well, actually, that was rejected, I should say, by the uh, CCC. And we had discussed in a fair amount of detail last week uh, based upon the notes I had taken, as well as the, uh, um, uh, the edict, if you will, of the board, I have implemented the changes and modifications into the document that are in your packet. And just as a reminder, the, uh, the edits that were required were removing all of the highlighted or rejected clauses that were in the original and endorsed HCA. And then also in, on page three for section number seven, to take the wording that was originally in the uh, HCA and utilizing the wording in the verbiage that the CCC had used in their, uh, their model template. So that was inserted as well. So those are, those are the, the edits or changes versus what we had seen uh, last week and have been rejected by the CCC. So that preserved all of the language that covered areas that were not even mentioned in the template. Correct, where yes. Where we had alignment with Sun Fusions about what the considerations would be between themselves and the town. Exactly. Okay. Now, did you get a chance to review it? Because I, oh, yeah. I reviewed the electronic copy. Yeah. So, and I didn't see anything that stood out. No. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, I also looked at 
several post-community agreements that are currently in force in the towns around us. And from what I've researched here, we've got a lot in here compared to other towns. We do. We have a <laughs> lot in there compared to other towns. Yes, sir. Um, and there's a lot of duplication. And I had talked to Ron today. I mean, I think what we do here is go forward with it. But I think if it ends up on another attorney's desk, I wouldn't be surprised of it coming back here based on what I've. So I think, <laughs> I think even taking the approach that we're taking, which is being mindful of, because you gave us four options. There were two extremes. One was the we waive everything and we don't have an agreement. One was we walk away from the whole process. And then there was the two in the middle where we either accept the state's template, which is in my mind very similar to waiver, or <laughs> right. um, resubmit with edits. Um, again, I, I, frankly, I wasn't willing to consider resubmitting without edits because despite the, the, the change of regime within the CCC, the lower level and middle level people who are the ones that actually do these reviews are, are not necessarily like turning over the way that the leadership is at the CCC. So, and, and we are exposed because every time, it's similar when parts are going through an inspection process, is that once somebody rejects something, they don't always go through and do the rest of the inspection. So there is some exposure fundamentally that we can resubmit this and there'll, there'll be some other edit that comes back, right? Well, and there's a whole guidance for municipalities that I read through. And I mean, really, they are pushing the towards that model. Yeah, template they agreement. are very firmly pushing towards yeah. the model template agreement. So if we can sneak this under the radar by, and I think one of the things that we need to make sure we do, it, I know we're not the ones that submit it. I know it's on behalf of Sun Fusions. I think we need to draft a letter that basically states, hey, we have you know, worked with Sun Fusions to address the shortfalls that were previously identified when submitted, you know, and, and make it clear that we do have alignment between the entities relative to the, the agreement, right? Mm -hmm. And I know it's, you don't, you're not obligated to include it in any package, but we would appreciate the courtesy. So um, I'd like to make a motion that um, we, because I, I have reviewed it in advance yeah. too, I'd like to make a motion that we um, uh, s sign and provide to Sun Fusions um, the manufacturing and cultivation agreements as edited by Ron. Okay, second. Um, do. Yeah, um, in one second. Yeah. Um, in, in, in terms of, and, and and I didn't specify it in the motion, um, we probably do want to at least route it to KP for a proofread. Yep. But um, I, I would make sure it went with instructions to them not to get too fancy with their editing other than dotting I's and crossing T's. Yeah, right. I've, and I have some, con I mean, I just went through with Sturbridge in their host community agreements, which were also drafted by Nick Costanzo, mm -hmm. ironically, and uh, they had some issues with bad faith uh, agreements down there oh, and being very restrictive. Interesting, <laughs> yeah, which may be why they haven't called me back because I've been trying to get linked yeah. up with their cultivator so that we could do an on site visit and yeah. actually get that kind of yeah. like experience of understanding what, um, you know, get some real world review of outdoor, indoor cultivation, doing a physical, you know, review of like what it's like to be standing 500 yards away, standing half a mile away, that sort of thing. So I haven't gotten a call back yet. Yeah. So maybe it's because of that. And then um, I did a lot of research also into the um, manufacturing agreement and spoke at length with um, the planning board chair and the reality is we haven't seen any documents to what that manufacturing is to look like. Right. And it's not so black and white. I know one of the um, requests was to just reject it because manufacturing isn't allowed in the rural residential. Um, however, again, in 
talking with the chair, it seems like it all depends on what comes through. And I think for us at this select board level, where this is just a mere handshake, you can now come into town and have permission to work with our boards, which this is effectively what it is. that document. Yep. Um, I think it would be, not be prudent for us to not sign that manufacturing based on that. Yeah. Yep. And 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 I think I, I think there's a lot of work ahead of our boards, right, to make sure that what goes into place aligns with kind of like the intent and the and the um, overall mm -hmm. um, welfare of the community, both from a standpoint of everything from you know in, any environmental concerns to to you know economic growth. Mm -hmm. So um, okay. So did you, I motion you seconded. Yeah. Any discussion? discussion. Yep. So the building bylaws specifically prohibit manufacturing in the rural residential area. Correct. And I'm assuming the HA says six lots is for building. Correct. In rural residential. Correct. So I'm not trying to challenge you, I'm just trying to understand. Yep. What allows the select board to violate the building bylaws? So, uh, say that one more time. What he, allows he's, the he's select board? He's, he's asking what entitles us to violate the the zoning laws which fundamentally we're not violating we're, it because we don't we're not precluding the planning board from saying no you can't do manufacturing in that area okay. but part of the challenge is the definition of manufacturing from a bylaw definition versus from um, a, either marijuana or general agricultural uh, product definition and I'll give you an example okay um, currently at Oakcomb Farm, we have a brewery bottling facility. It was determined to be low impact and permitted in the rural residential, even though it's technically a manufacturing type operation. They defined it under it being an agricultural product because it's very limited. It's not like they're. Um, it's not like we have a, a, a twenty thousand bottle a month. A uh, soda pop plant that's you know got 200 <coughs> employees going in there. They've got you know their their 10 or 15 folks that are involved in their brewery. You know, traffic consistent with you know that area and the other things that have been allowed on that property for zoning. Okay, so a, a 60,000 square foot manufacturing facility in that rural residential associated with marijuana would be problematic. If what's brought to the planning board is a 500 square foot room where they cut the buds off the plants, uh, and that's the only work that's occurring from a manufacturing perspective, right, or, or some other similar small footprint that's within the confines of processing what's, what's being produced on site, that may fall more under the standpoint of a reasonable processing of the agricultural product versus manufacturing, right? Do you, do you see the, the delineation there? Now, the problem is the language in the bylaws and the language in the marijuana uh, state laws don't really define where the line is between that kind of minimal processing versus I'm, you know, doing all the cooking and extraction and creating my edibles and putting out thousands of, of individual packages, you know, worth of, of material, none of that's really strictly defined. So it's really for, in this instance, our planning board to take a look at the plan for the site, look at the scope of the operation, determine if it's consistent with what would go on in a rural residential neighborhood, like if, you know, um, I think one of the folks that runs a horse farm also bakes bread, right? Is it more along the, I bake bread in my kitchen and I need a health, you know, and I need a health inspection on my kitchen because I'm baking bread, or is it more along the lines of, you know, I've got 200 people in a Pepsi bottling plant in rural residential? Okay, so that's, that's, that's what's the difference, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
but but also also in the and I um, one of the things that was also drawn to my attention there are waivers at the bottom of that bylaw which allows them to waiver from what proceeds before it so and that's something they're gonna have to review and decide but again I think for the select board to make that determination at this point without seeing anything which isn't required for us to see at this point correct we would set ourselves up for legal recourse so. we'll go right to left <laughs> I don't know if I need this or not. Uh, Dave Holcraft here. Listen, I was on the planning board, okay? This manufacturing is totally prohibited in a rural residential. Preparing the product, the marijuana, bundling it up, et cetera, et cetera, is perfectly fine. Manufacturing, we discussed this heavily on the planning board when I was on it. We, we made these new bylaws up because the former town administrator, and Mr. Fromm, and the chairman on the planning board wanted to do these new bylaws. So you can't say your analogy, Beth, is totally left field. This, you cannot do this big manufacturing in a rural residential area. And the planning board very, was very clear on it. Uh, if you're gonna do anything, you might be able to go to them, like you said, but no, this is not allowed in this rural residential area. And you should not put this in your host agreement. Because what you're saying is a selectman, you're setting yourself up you're setting, you're saying, oh, it's in the host agreement, it's okay? No, it's not okay. It's very, very clear. We just voted these new bylaws in. People need to be protected, and that's what we did on the planning board. Planting, growing, that's fine, but not manufacturing in a rural residential area. And the reason we, didn't, we voted this was we were trying to protect the people that moved out into Brookfield into the rural residential areas. They didn't want to be in the city. They didn't want to be near anything. And that's why we didn't put it in. So what you're doing, you shouldn't even sign that, having that in there. Because what we could do, a bunch of us will get an injunction against you and Mr. Fromm, and we'll tie this whole thing up, okay? So what you're doing is totally wrong. You should not sign that agreement tonight with the way, the way you got it written. So give it some thought. You guys can't I, I, I don't disagree with a lot that you're saying, but. You can't override the bylaws, Brad. Can't do it. You are 100% correct. Okay. The select board is not granting the opportunity for a marijuana business to start. All we're doing is allowing them the opportunity to pursue and proceed to try. That's all this agreement is doing. Can you repeat that again? Pursue what? The select board is not granting the opportunity for a marijuana business to start. All we're doing is allowing them the opportunity to pursue and try, uh, proceed to try. my notes that I've taken over the last, since Thursday, extensive notes. <laughs> um, was there anyone else over here? Go ahead. Steve Carmen, uh, since our meeting, your meeting last week, I've looked into this a little bit because I didn't know what the agenda was up until the meeting happened. That's when we learned that the host community agreements were uh, rejected due to non-compliance. So I looked at the Cannabis Control Commission's website and uh, they have some guidance documents on their website. Mm -hmm. One of them is uh, called, it's under host community agreements mm -hmm. uh, and it does provide two particular sections which I think are Can valuable. you show that to me again? I can, sure. I got a couple of copies of it. I just, I didn't have my glasses on, so I couldn't see what you were showing me. Yep, I brought yeah. this. Yep. And the URL is just masscannabiscontrol.com slash host dash community dash agreement. Yep. There's two sections in there. Uh, the first one that I think I want to emphasize is the basic terms and conditions. And underneath there, there are a couple of things which, which uh, well, here it says, while the, while the parties may agree on a wide range of terms and conditions, the following are possible provisions that, that may be outlined in the agreement. And there's two particular things in there, which I think you did do, which I'm appreciative of, and that was the conditions deemed necessary to ensure public safety and to ensure pu uh, public health. 
So I know there's been some talks about the model template not having any of that language, and it doesn't. You're absolutely right. And I think, as you mentioned today, Beth, if you were to say simply submit the model template, that would be almost akin to waiving the host community agreement. So I think it's good to preserve that. And my concern that I've raised in the past is I believe that it would be valuable to get input from other boards as well, planning board and board of health. Because I think this overlaps with our potential zoning bylaws. And Brad, you mentioned last week that this might be seen as a, an overstep of other boards or committees. So I just wanna make sure that that type of protection is preserved in the agreement. And I don't want it to be seen as the Cannabis Control Commission is dismissing that. Their model template may not outline it, but their basic terms and conditions do specify that public safety and public health provisions may be included in the host community agreement. Um, just out of curiosity, because I didn't look at this part of it, what is that dated? Uh, it's on their website right now. It does not have a date, but if you go to that uh, URL. Yeah, I know where it is. It's masscannabiscontrol.com host dash community dash agreement. So there's the guidance from 2024. And what, what was that again? The URL? Yeah. Host-community-agreement. Oh, I did that right here. Yeah, and Steve, to your point, um, probably why most of it survived was that right there, fundamentally. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good to preserve that, uh, absolutely. The other part of this document that I wanted to draw quick attention to was there's also a section in here called uh, Prohibited Terms and Conditions. And when the Cannabis Control Commission came back with noncompliance and they outlined those couple of sections, did you have an opportunity or did town council have an opportunity to review that non-compliance within the context of these prohibited terms and conditions? I actually have reviewed it myself. What's that? I've actually reviewed it myself in the last few days. Yeah. <laughs> because it does outline here about costs. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. fundamentally, yeah. Fu fundamentally, uh, fundamentally, we couldn't, the, the, at the end of the day, and I think I stated this during the last meeting, is that it was clear from the guidance why we got the rejections that we got because it was places where they felt we were putting an undue financial burden on the applicant. Right, and financial impact needs to be tied to uh, community impact fees. Correct. Yeah, and that makes sense. Yeah, the only the only financial fees that can be tied to anything is that community impact fee. Right, and the and the the other non-compliance was discouraging parties from pursuing legal recourse. Right. Right. So it's the uh, identification section. Yep. And that's also outlisted here as a prohibited term. So before throwing out those sections altogether, I was wondering if there would be an opportunity to convert some of that wording, which did offer protections to the town in a way that would be compliant. You did express some concerns with KP Law's ability to revise this because you said this would be the third attempt of sending it back. So there was some doubt that town council would assist in that without getting another, another rejection. But I would consider maybe some of those protections that were offered by the town, maybe costs. Can they be associated with community impact fees? Is there a way to preserve that in a way that would honor the contract and not cross a line of prohibited terms? It might require uh, so, so actually, the, I think the opportunity there is that in the event that we had to bring in an independent consultant at town expense because of, say, odor complaints, Okay. Um, we could attempt in the following year to recoup those costs as part of the uh, community impact fees, though we'd have to go back to the definition of the community impact fees and what's allowable and not allowable and see if we could fit the language of the support of that consultant or, or independent contractor to it being tied to it. And I think you could only 
you could probably only prove that if you if you did kind of fundamentally scientifically and independently prove that you had the issue that that folks were complaining about but if you did then i think you could probably tie it to the community impact fee so that the the ultimate cost did eventually work its way back we just can't call it out explicitly and proactively mm -hmm. um, as that so I, I don't think there's any additional verbiage that needs to be added in order to support that though okay so, so. based on the wording that's being removed is there a concern on your behalf that any protections from costs are being removed from the town so I think it doesn't. I think it takes away some of the direct assurance around cost. I, I don't know that it takes away the ability to eventually collect if necessary. Okay. If that makes any sense. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, it, it's just all going to determine on that interpretation of the allowable expenses that can be rolled up into a into the community uh, impact fees. All right. If if I might just help clarify that and, and support Beth's comments uh, as part of the. Uh, CIF, the community, community impact fees, what it would do is probably just place a, a, a higher burden on the town to be able to prove and provide and itemize those exact expenses versus the original wording, which was a little bit more nebulous and, and high level. Right, uh, or, or place it directly on the applicant's expense. On the applicant, absolutely. Yeah. So it just really kind of changed the perspective, but as Beth indicates, if, if we, the town, do our homework and we itemize and categorize each of those expenses, then eventually, yes, we could recoup those costs, those additional costs, if you will, as part of the com community impact fees. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, so I would encourage the board to review that host community agreement section, both in the basic terms and conditions and the prohibited terms, because I think that it might give some context about what is mandatory and what is permissible for the contract. Right. And one thing that I will get to say one more time is, even though it's been mentioned that it doesn't necessarily hold any weight, I don't like that freezing of town regulations to February 1st, 2024 in the wording. I know it's been mentioned that you don't want to mess with any other wording in the contract, but I just want to say that I don't feel comfortable with denying the town that opportunity to catch our zoning bylaws and our regulations up to speed based on community concerns. Not for this business opportunity in particular, but for this industry as a whole and how it will affect our town. Thank you. So what do we want to do here? I don't know. Well, we have a motion in a second. Right. So are you taking more comments? I mean, we're. OK. I mean, it was obviously Mr. Carter will take much longer than the two minutes, but that right. wasn't really just a comment. There was a dialogue. Th there was a dialogue. Right. So, so uh, we could probably take a couple no, more. What's that? I, I would take one or two more comments. OK. Um, um, Lady, I was going to say ladies first, but. <laughs> no, I go first. <laughs> my, my question, my question, my question, my question, my question, my question, my question is, is, is this is going to be just the agriculture part of it? Or is it part of the business part about producing this product? You know, it should be only just the product harvesting that you're talking about farming in that community, agricultural. Now, you can't put in your um, a business because of, or manufacturing because it's not zoned for it. You know, you know what I'm saying? It just, you can't produce no property because it's, it's, it's not agricultural. So I think going back to what I said before, all this agreement is allowing is for Mr. Fromm to actually go forward and try to present his case to the planning board to whether, and come to an agreement to whether it is suitable or not. And for business or for agriculture? I'm trying to, it's the whole thing. For, so there's, there's three separate agreements on the table currently, and the motion is for two of them. So there's two separate host community agreements. One that's specifically for the agricultural, okay? And the other that is um, largely a mirror of the agricultural one that, that uh, allows for, I don't wanna say allows for, that enables him to pursue manufacturing at the same site as the agricultural, okay? And as 
uh, Brad spoke to previously, right? Um, it only it basically enables him to 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 let the cannabis control board know that he will be approaching the other town boards regarding what his overall business plan is for agricultural um, extraction and then in town retail using a, a vertical integration business model. Okay. So um, while the bylaw does state, right, there's three separate agreements, and while the bylaw does state that in rural residential there won't be manufacturing, it also allows for the waiving of any of the, uh, any specific portion of the bylaw if it's deemed appropriate for, you know, the, if it's deemed appropriate by the planning board, fundamentally. So um, there is room similar to when there, there, are, there have been other times when for other properties, other industries, that either variances or 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 uh, special permits have been issued that are not necessarily explicitly by uh, right in a particular zone, um, and so this would be one of those instances where it would come before the planning board to determine whether or not to to waive um, that portion of the zoning bylaw based on whether or not it was consistent with um, th like the overall character and, and use of the property fundamentally. So um, it's based on the way that the, the state laws are written to allow the pursuit of this type of industry, it, it's more appropriate for us to fundamentally enter into the agreement to allow him to pursue his plan but it does not necessarily beholden any of the reviewing boards to approve any of the plans associated with it. Does that make yeah, sense? The thing is, it seems like you're, it's, it's a fast track. I'm always going to be agricultural, and that goes through. And then we can rezone the property for our business, so we can do it. It, it, it seems like it's fast track, and all we get the agricultural, because it's zones on for it. And then, then we'll come in for, for the, Well, I think he'll have to handle that if the planning board doesn't, you know, if he wants to do manufacturing and the planning board doesn't allow it, that's probably his next track is to try to rezone it. Um, but again, I kind of want to go back to, I'm not a litigator, so I have to write things down. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to. So a host community, and this is just a general, a host community agreement is a contract between a town and a marijuana business to outline operational terms, mitigate community impacts and provide financial compensation through community impact fees. It ensures compliance with the local regulations, clarifies expectations, and is required for the business to obtain a state license. It is still up to the local boards and committees to ensure compliance. If at any point there is non-compliance, the HCA can be reviewed and nullified, but not without reason. Right, like I said, I just he should be going to the planning board to change the zoning for it. Wants a business. Well, and that occurred. Yeah. We voted on that at annual town meeting. Well, no, he's what he's uh, talking uh, about is the rezone uh, the, the property gotcha. in order to yeah. make yeah. manufacturing. Yeah. 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 Right. But but fundamentally our our bylaw doesn't necessarily require that the way that it's written today. So the way that our zoning bylaw is written today, it it enables somebody to at least apply to the planning board for a waiver for a portion of the zoning regulation. So, so it's, it's not necessarily a requirement, the way that the bylaw is written, okay, for that to be rezoned if the, let's call it the scope of the manufacturing is not inconsistent with, you know, the, the overall property use. So um, that's, that's fundamentally the situation that we're, that, that we're in and so it's it's more appropriate for us to 
refer this in a manner that puts it in front of the body that actually can make that determination, which is the planning board. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying is, it, did he put already plan into the board, into the board already see the board? He, Nothing. He, he, you, you can't so, do that so until- So he has to do this first, yeah, and then he has to get approved through the Cannabis Control Commission. Once he gets a license from the Cannabis Control Commission, and actually I don't even know if you would have to. Yeah, there's like a, there's a whole, there's a whole sequence of events. Yeah. yeah. Does he have to have a license before he goes to the planning? Board? No, you can do them simultaneously. Yeah. 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 I, I just thought it's like fast tracking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to, agriculture is okay, you can apply for that. But to change the land uh, to commercial instead of residential, that's, that's, that was my issue. Mm -hmm. is, is yeah, but it doesn't, and one of the advantages is that it wouldn't necessarily change overall change that plot of land so if they waived it for the purposes of some uh, of some low level processing of the of the cannabis material right the advantage there is you haven't just created a business zone that leaves it open for a bunch of other development that might be very inconsistent with the neighborhood if you rezone that whole plot of land business right so, so there's, there's actually lower risk to the local like character of the community to consider a waiver for some, some very minimal processing on the property than there would be if we, if we tried to say, hey, you're going to have to rezone business. Well, if he's going to go rezone business, you may wind up with a large business subdevelopment that you know increases traffic outrageously in that same area. I mean, there's a, a risk reward to the overall character of the community, where it it you know it may be way lower impact to just consider a waiver for some minimal processing than it would be to to go ahead and re try to rezone that property. So, what, so. what would you consider low processing? I, I, I wouldn't make a decision on it because I'm not on the planning board. Uh, yeah, I'm board. not on the planning board. I don't know. I don't know that I. I don't know that I can. I, I don't know that I could speak to it. But I. But you know, some. If you're talking less than say. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking say like less than 10 percent of the of the already planned footprint being dedicated to to processing what's grown there, I, I think that that's would be low level. If it's not going to increase really fundamentally the footprint of the agricultural footprint. And it's contained within the agricultural footprint. I think you're talking about something that's that's not uh, like a high impact manufacturing. And that's just me as an opinion. I'm not I'm not saying that that's what the planning board's definition. If you're asking what in Beth's head is that right? Okay, you know it's 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 maybe upwards of a of a thousand two thousand square foot of a sixty thousand square foot facility that's dedicated to chopping stuff up and yeah. binding it up, right? And, and what's the, what's the No, I'm, I'm just, I think I just threw out a number. I don't remember what we put on the manufacturing agreement. Yeah, okay, so, so actually, no, nope, it's, on, it's, it, it's on here specifically, right? So overall, proposed use is about five acres of, the, of 124 uh, acre property, 500 foot of administrative space, 2,000 square foot of manufacturing space, um, and then I think we, I, I think that overall that five acres comes out to be, I don't remember exactly what it came out to be, but I think we were talking about 60,000 square feet of indoor agricultural. So, so the agricultural portion is indoors. It's a greenhouse style agricultural. And so, and so you're talking a six, up to a 60,000 square foot indoor agricultural, 2,000 square foot of manufacturing. So you're not talking about you know, we're talking about something that's the size of a, of a two-bedroom ranch. It's about five percent of the yeah. footprint. Yeah. They allow for, for growing on the property. I mean, the CBP, whatever they have. Like they they could have they could have applied for up to a hundred thousand square foot of uh, agricultural. They, uh, I think originally they asked for less, but but just to ensure that they had the, the overall like if the if the if over time they needed the space, I think they they asked for sixty thousand as an initial tier for the agricultural. Yeah, so I think I did the math. It was like 1.2 acres of indoor greenhouse, something like that. So in that, and the five acre usage includes the office space, the manufacturing space, and the parking space associated with the property. So 
124 acres, five acres in use, about a about an acre and a quarter, an acre and a half of indoor greenhouse, and then the equivalent of basically a two to three bedroom ranch for office and manufacturing. This, yeah, there's two separate ones, yes. Yeah, but the manufacturing has to go to the planning board. Both do. Yep, and be approved by them. Correct. Okay, so my clarifying question is, is the planning board, can they approve it on their own, or does it go to the neighborhood, to the people? Of the they'll have a whole public hearing. They'll have a public, public hearing. hearing. They'll have a public hearing, and they'll notify a Butters. They'll notify a Butters, but does it go to a vote, or can they, the three people themselves, because it's because a, this, there's everyone yeah. here is against it, right? It's a it's a public here, yeah. It's a public hearing, so there's there's five, five, so the five member board makes the vote. What gets put in our neighborhood. Correct. Okay. Can you clarify? Can I just clarify that? Yeah. It's a five member board. We're asking for a special permit, so it may be that four members out of five have to approve it. So under normal law, it would be three members or four. Four members out of five have to vote for it. One of the members can disapprove and it can still go through. It doesn't have to be an overall unanimous vote. My notes are all messed up. So you both said that you did not um, speak to town council. So was it only Mr. Aponte that spoke to town council regarding yes. the HCA? So may I ask him um, what was town council's viewpoint and recommendation out of the five um, options that they gave the select board? Because you read them out last week, but the select board did not discuss them all. They immediately, both of them went to the one that they chose without really having any discussion on the options in what uh, town council's recommend was. Instead, they did confer a little bit with uh, Mr. Uh, Attorney Sosabe, who represents the Yes, in my discussion with uh, with Koppelman, or excuse me, KP Law, um, their, I'll call her, the, their marijuana expert, if you will, uh, in providing what the options were for, for the town after we had received the rejection, she did indicate that there was you know, five choices, if you will. Um, as Beth had indicated, two were kind of on either end of the spectrum walk away from it completely or just wave everything and, and move in. Um, one of the other suggestions, obviously, uh, that's been discussed is we just resubmit and hope with the changeover in leadership that the uh, CCC would have a different viewpoint on it. Uh, obviously, that was that was rejected. It was discussed briefly and rejected by, by the select board. Uh, then the, uh, the others were pretty much what we're at tonight, where we just delete the sections that the CCC had indicated were unacceptable and non-compliant. Uh, so they were taken out of the agreement that the select board has before them this evening. And then based upon the subsequent discussion and reviewing the uh, CCC's model template, we did utilize some verbiage that they had used in theirs uh, in, in lieu of I, I guess the section they didn't necessarily reject, but they had flagged as being a, a concern. So the better part of Valor, we decided to be you know, more careful, and that's once again what's before the select board this evening. But they, did they recommend one of the five options? They did they not. They can't recommend Yeah, they, they <laughs> in, in working careful. with attorneys, they're they, very, they they're rarely do that. They're very careful not to recommend it. Yeah. And, and in fact, I mean... <laughs>
Well, you could also, I mean, you could also say we, we tried to wait the first time until the model agreement came out. And, and, and so literally the week that we were finalizing the first draft of our HCA is when that model came out. And I read that draft of the model that week and said, this is not going to be acceptable. Let's drive on with the process that we're in the middle of. Okay. Based on kind of the smoke signals coming out of the, the Cannabis Commission, the likelihood of them redrafting that host community agreement that they released at the end of May, I think it was, when that first got published, um, and having it have better coverage than what we did negotiate um, with the full involvement of the marijuana specialist at KP Law. Um, I don't know that that's a, I don't think that's the direction that the guidance from the state is going to go, right? Fundamentally. The direction they're going is less is Less is best. more. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, there's some if very- If you look at the towns around us that have recently approved, they're- well, well, that director's been that director She's has terminated been terminated for other well, reasons. Well, well, first yeah. of all, that that director has been uh, functionally on paid leave for four months. Okay, so them being fired today doesn't actually change who's been running that show for the last whole period of time that we've been processing this. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning, Mr. Braun has shown um, a lack of regard for the cost of permitting process and, and non compliance. Oh, oh. Starting, out, starting out with the, um, five, not the five day business notification in the newspaper uh, when he applied for the Conservation Commission. Uh, he applied with the um, dissolved. I, so system. I understand all that, and I can. Well, and, and, I, and I've done. Do, go ahead. So, so in that regard, I actually looked into this, and in, in that particular situation there, Keith Realty is the one where there's issues with noncompliance. It's the same address. It's but this contract is with Sun Fusion. Same address, same, same different house, corporations. Same chairperson. It, does, it doesn't matter. The way the courts look at this, and I, and I went through this, is an these are different detail. people, essentially. Sun Fusions is an individual and Keith Realty is an individual. Yes? But when you go to look for a business person to do business with, you do your due diligence. And somebody who had to, who committed Medicaid fraud and had to repay uh, the state of Connecticut and Massachusetts over a million and a half dollars and has been non-compliant with any initial permitting, that shows the character of the person, the reputation. So the I need to ask you to, I, I need to actually ask you to stop right now because one of the challenges so something to be very clear about, right? And it's one of the areas where um, cannabis is very different from many other industries in here is that fundamentally there's not a... Um, I have it here. Yeah, do you have the verbiage? Because yeah. I, 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 the verbiage is escaping me, but I know I was reading it over your shoulder. In, in short, there's no proper person. Right. There we go. That was the term right. I was looking for. So, so... Fundamentally, I, I can read it real yeah, quick. So in Massachusetts, the local sec board does have some influence over whether a cannabis establishment can operate within the town, but cannot directly refuse an applicant based solely on their background. There is no proper person standard in this regard, unlike the liquor licensing process. The Cannabis Control Commission handles the formal background checks and licensing decisions, while the select board has a role in local permitting and approving a host community agreement with the cannabis business. 
This host community agreement outlines how the business will operate in the town and ensure compliance with our local regulations and preferences. This puts the onus on our boards and committees to conduct their due diligence. Well, it does say solely on the background. This isn't solely on the background. It's also on, the, on what they're currently doing. Yes. They're currently doing this. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ye
So I would say yes. Yes. I, I mean, it, those provisions are in there for a reason. Okay. Those provisions are in there for a reason. So yes. So we made a vote. Yeah, we, we, well, made well, a, we, we, we do have, have a motion, motion and a second. second. Question? It's a quick question, I promise. Sure. Okay, so the, the name of this company is Aviation Sun Fusion. We correct? Correct. Two different so, corporations. Uh, I'm, I, two different corporations. Okay, two different corporations. I understand that, but uh, but he is the proprietor of both corporations. So you're in litigation with the construction company at this present time for breaking the bylaws. So you've done nothing to the construction company. No. So uh, I hear everybody talking about how the curb cut and he's got equipment there. That, and that's an issue that's being at Conservation Commission right now. Okay, but the curb cut is the highway department, am I wrong? The highway department is the one that hands out the permit? Yeah, I'm not going to, you can bring that this these questions to the uh, Conservation Commission to what's happening with that. Okay, so what are the Board of Selectmen doing about the violations that have been done on this property? Are they, not, are they just sitting by and, and not doing anything? So you're sitting here saying that they're two separate entities, which I understand. Yeah. Legally, they are two separate entities. But when you're in pursuit of one particular person for one entity, you don't go into business with that same person in another entity. It's called bad business. So that means that the town that we, the people that we elected to run this town are doing bad business. Why are you doing bad business is my question. Why would you sign an agreement with a person that you know cannot follow the rules, who probably will not follow the rules on anything further that you have involvement with? Why would the two of you, as selectmen, who are elected to represent everyone in this room, and they're all telling you, we don't want this in our community. But the two of you are going to do it anyway. There's personal reasons there. I know for a fact that people have talked about Mr. Prom going in business with one of the board of selectmen for the old property at, at the Gables. But that fell through. So that means there's a conflict of interest there. Because if someone is going into business, with Mr. Fromm on another entity. They should not be involved in anything that goes on with Mr. Fromm going forward from that point. It's called a conflict of interest. It's called an ethic violation. And if it's an ethic violation, they shouldn't be doing it. Thank you. So maybe they should rethink what they're doing, and maybe they should listen to the people that put them in this office, because they won't get another term. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the, there is a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, so, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So then, so that was one and three. But, and just to, I guess maybe for an authorization. Uh, to reach out to Mr. Fromm or his attorney. There are uh, at least one item that we need to clarify. Uh, the parking space, uh, or excuse me, parking area. Right now it's listed in the document before you as TBD. Uh, so I think we would need to know that specific number to put it into the contract. Actually, that's the planning board. I think that may be why it was left here. TBD is it's okay. part of the plan that would be submitted in front of the planning board. Okay, fair enough. So, um, it, and it would, it would, I think, just some very specific requirements based on employee count and what have you, and that's going to depend on what the, their final determination is on the manufacturing. That makes so, sense. Yeah, that's why it was put in there that way. Okay. So, all right. Um, 
So relative to the retail. Um, Ron, I know we had had a conversation around whether to, to mimic the um, manufacturing or to go with um, leveraging the um, template. Correct. And if you notice in your packet, you have two drafts of the retail HCA, uh, one of which is literally verbatim from the CCC's model template with the check boxes. Uh, one thing that is outstanding there are the additional fees and permits. There's a box there. I purposely left it blank to see if there was anything additionally we'd, we want to go after. The model agreement does cover your normal things such as real estate tax, property tax for equipment. Um, no, obviously a water sewer are, are, are not uh, germane to this particular project, but I don't know if there was any other fees that are taxes that the select board would like to include in there, especially in consideration of the uh, direction and guidance that we were provided with by the CCC. I, I think actually what's missing here, so I think we need to, I think the way this is written and I don't know if you, you had consulted yet with KP on it. No, but no we, KP we, isn't that. We would need to explicitly call out. So I, I believe Clambox is one of the last pro properties that's on town water. Mm -hmm. um, but we would probably need to call out explicitly um, water fees because the way that the, that verbiage is written is very tricky, right? In that anything you don't call out in that box you can't charge, correct? Even if it's like usual and customary permitting fee. So I think we need to call that out. I think we need to call out any building permit fees. I think we need to call out standard standard planning board application fees, right? Um, and I think we probably need to basically put a note out we need to check and see basically all of our current permitting and licensing fees and anything that might apply to this type of project needs to go in there got it so 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 that's one of them that's the kind of vanilla CCC template written to specifically uh, cater to the retail HCA and then the other draft that you'll see in your packet uh, pertains that's pertaining to the retail is really just 99% uh, uh, exactly like the HCA that was just voted upon to, to be approved and endorsed, except for the, the minor changes where it's now gonna be referring to retail versus manufacturing. So we have the both options before us, the more restrictive HCA that's in line with the manufacturing HCA that was just approved and the, I guess, less restrictive uh, CCC model template. And I would be happy, <laughs> uh, to be honest, if the board can decide which, I guess, model or template they would like to use and then I could certainly run whichever format uh, by KP law for, you know, any additional corrections or edits before we are ready to actually approve and uh, endorse. So I have kind of my opinion on it. I'm, I think this is simple and that's what we discussed last time. I looked back through the meeting um, from our last meeting and went back through this section and that that's I think kind of what we had agreed to was yeah, I, the model agreement I, for the retail because it was different than cultivation yeah, and, and, and manufacturing. And, and I know Ron you, you consulted with me on the you know potentially using our existing agricultural and manufacturing as a template for the retail fundamentally um, and uh, while there's a benefit of consistency, I, I also don't know if we're not, if, it, if it's not say a safer punt still to, to leverage the, the host community agreement for the retail template, especially where 
I mean, fundamentally, there is one business on the back side of Clambox that, that could potentially, as a butters, take issue with the property, with the retail there. But the bulk of the neighbors are the racetrack, the liquor store, solar farm, and the transfer station, mm -hmm. and a processing plant for material. Mm -hmm. So it's a fairly low low potential impact neighborhood, fundamentally. Right. Right. There's not a gymnastic place right there. That's what I'm saying. That's the one business that's potentially concerning. Um, but uh, but the, the flip side of it is, is, is by, that is an area that by right, that business can be in. So, um, so it's, that's, that's the challenge there. I mean, the only benefit to using our agricultural and manufacturing as a template is we did already at least get a handshake on hours of operation. Um, and it would have the odor control um, pieces relative to, to that one abutting business. So I think that was one of the reasons why, why, why Ron came back and we did have an outside conversation okay. about, about leveraging our, you know, already hand shook on the manufacturing and agriculture yeah. so that at least the same, like, similar protection provisions were in place right. even though they aren't part of the template. Okay. Which which made good sense, especially where if it wasn't for that one business, I would say I'd probably be 100% on board with just using the template. But just because of that, the particular traffic and the demographic of the people going in and out of there, it would be better if we ensure that, you know, odors mitigated, that sort of thing. Okay. So, um, but that was that was the offline conversation with Ron. So I apologize that you're hearing right. about it here. But that's the way <laughs> that's this works, right. unfortunately, yeah. with a three-person board. So, um, but uh, what? So this is which one is? This? These are both like, the model. These ones. are both the model one. Well, this has nothing to do with anything. I don't see one this with is, the address. This is it right here, 53 South Maple. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that would be it. Do I have that one? Yeah, I was gonna say it. it oh, it's have the one that's draft stamped draft. Oh, there it is. Okay. So. So we need to, and we need to basically enter into negotiations with Mr. Fromm's entity to get the square foot, et cetera, and so forth. Let's just see if there's, do you think you got everything out that was really just pertaining to agriculture? I think so. I mean, sir, I would certainly want KP law to give it the once over, but I don't think it would be a, an extensive or intensive review. review. Okay. Yeah, really the, the most significant missing portion on this particular HCA are really the specifics of the building. Once again, the parking space, Right. Uh, building, I mean, obviously, I think we should have a much better handle on square footage. Parking space might be the same category where that's to be determined once uh, it goes before the planning board based upon the, the formulas for that type of a retail establishment. Right. Yeah, I, I, I would say let's go ahead and get this in front of KP, um, and then threw them over in front of uh, Sun Fusions. Um, I think. Yeah, 
and actually wastewater is still potentially an issue with the retail because any any implement cleaning or stuff like that a minute if metal touches marijuana it's considered hazardous waste I don't know if any of that would apply in this facility it would depend on what kind of uh, um, and what their specific handling options are yeah so let's do that let's get this in front of them and then get it over to his council okay just, just um, and for, then for, for my my own uh, comfort level if the board could make a uh, uh, a motion to utilize the uh, I guess I'll call it the the Brookfield template All right, for so HCA. I'll make a motion that we leverage the the previously defined Brookfield template mm -hmm. for the basis of the retail and the uh, uh, direct Ron to get the draft over to KP and to uh, start the process of, of getting alignment on that host community agreement. Second. We're we going through any discussion. Do you recognize it? My question is, isn't the dispute on the land between the two businesses right there? And that's what I was told by the owners that they had a dispute. On, to figure out how much parking you're going to have there and so on, if there's a dispute on the land, if people have a parking on this property, or, or is this, I heard there's a dispute on, on the property, where the line is or what it's that's not our That's thing to handle. Yeah. I'm saying you're talking about pot and you're talking about so, 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 yeah, so, so what we're saying is that in order to finalize that agreement, there's an area that, that outlines the square footage of administrative space, retail space, and parking space. Right. So I, I would presume if it's in dispute that we can, you know, we just need to ensure that they, they take whatever the worst case scenario is relative to, to this business would be what would be reflected. So, um, but that again, that's that's not necessarily something that would preclude them defining what they expect the maximum of that to be. So, it, it, we may even be able to utilize language such as uh, square Up footage to, not to exceed. Yeah, that's that's what touch. I would recommend not yeah. to exceed and. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And last but not least, we have pretty much the same thing with the cultivation. Um, I, I actually incorporated into the motion. I, and I was going to say, I think it disappeared just by based upon the, yeah. the original, the first motion that, that was uh, accepted. Right. So, okay. You, we I, bundled, don't I bundled one and three in right. the motion. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the, the, the other two documents you have before you, you can throw them away. Right. So. Okay. Um, so technically we're still in open meeting. We are in open meeting. Uh, so police department installation, do we want to handle it? Um, and Rich, want to get rich? rich. over the police department insulation yeah yeah, yeah. Ron stack yeah I was gonna say we we can probably do that literally within a few minutes yeah. um, uh, based upon the discussion that we previously had with regards to the police station insulation project uh, I did reach out to uh, KP law for a little bit of guidance specifically with regards to the contract uh, that has been endorsed and approved by the town of Brookfield uh, with Dario designs and uh, that was that particular contract really had to do more with uh, the design, the um, bid, actually getting the bid specs together, reviewing the bid specs, uh, and then actually performing really project management type functions, um, but nothing to do with con actual construction itself. So based upon the discussion that the board had had, 
At this point, it appears as if uh, Tantasqua uh, Regional uh, High School and their, car correct me if I'm wrong, Rich, their carpentry department mm -hmm. is, is willing to take on this particular project. And with the assistance of Mr. Chafee and the faculty at Tes uh, Tantasqua, they'd be able to perform the quote unquote specs, if you will, which would really just be based upon the original designs and specifications that were in place and we currently have uh, when the building was constructed. Yeah. I, I don't know that that's accurate. I don't know what the original design was, but we came up with a solution to fix the problem. He and I both independently came up with the same solution. And he got back to me today, his name is Tim Segan. He got back to me today and the cost for the materials is based on, based on roughly 2,000 square feet at 88 cents per square foot for the materials to fix the building that we, or, or I didn't sign, that the board signed roughly 25,000, well, the 18,000 for the original contract to find out how to fix this problem and put it out to bid and then an additional bill of $6,400. I am irate over it, as you guys know from the last meeting and, and what I asked Ron to do KP is find out if we can cancel it, and essentially it's yes, we are going to get yeah, out of that contract. As long as we're doing it in-house. Yeah. Yeah. What, what did they say? Correct, yep. When I uh, presented it to, uh, to KP Law, they indicated that it is an enforceable contract, but based upon the fact that Dario Designs has done such a minimal amount of work at this point, it's very realistic and very reasonable to assume the fact that we could negotiate a settlement. Right. I think we would still have to probably pay something, but it certainly wouldn't be close to the $18,000. Yeah. Um, the also indicated that since Tentasqua has, I guess at least verbally agreed to perform the project, we do not have to go through chapter 30B or any of the procurement laws. Right. Mm -hmm. So that obviously right. saves with regards to that. So bottom line is I think we're in good shape with this, Yes, we probably will have to still write a check to Dario Designs, but it's going to be at a far less uh, amount of money. And I guess one of the things I would, unless there's other questions or concerns, if the board could authorize myself to negotiate a settlement with Dario Design, I can obviously come back to the board with whatever uh, amount mm -hmm. we, we can get and obviously discuss it at that point. I, I'm, I'm pretty steadfast on paying them zero and let them, letting them take us to court to explain why we would owe them anything when, the, when we came up with a fix for 88 cents a square foot for the materials to total under $2,000 and they're looking for 18,000. I'll go to court on that every day of the week. So I, I'll make a motion to allow you to speak to them and see what they're gonna be looking for but I'd also like you to indicate what we're doing to remediate the problem and maybe the embarrassment will then say okay tear up the contract and we're done <coughs> so my motion is to allow Ron to speak to Dario Design and see what we can do about getting them to agree to let us out of the contract I'll second that any discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. Um, so I know we can't get into the details, but have you been able to check to see? We, we, procured, we secured money, approximately 60000 to fix the problem? Yeah, I have reached okay. out to Senator Grant's office. Uh, they are looking into it. Uh, the question I posed to Senator Grant's office was if we do not utilize the full amount of the $60,000 that has been earmarked for this project, how much, well, I guess, one, can we utilize any remaining balance and two are there any restrictions with regards to utilizing that remaining balance so that is being looked into um, Senator Duran's office frankly they, they weren't sure uh, so okay. they were gonna go to some other I guess agencies at, at the state to discuss the, the specifics yeah it might actually need to be a special bill it, to, it might, to get us to mm -hmm. repurpose yeah. it but, but, yeah. but I mean in the chance that we could use it storm windows for this building is really uh, high on my list so we can save oh, yeah. that for another day. Yeah. All right. I was on that committee when we built that building, and there were a lot of shortcuts that they took in that building. 
That's why we're in the situation we're in. <laughs> You know, when, you, when we went out to, uh, when we went on the town hall floor to, to, um, for the motion to get the money to build this building, um, people kept throwing numbers around and they just picked an arbitrary number out of the air and said, well, we can build it for this. And it was much lower than what any of the amount that we got bids for or, you know, between mm -hmm. What the architects had said, what it was going to cost us to build this building. So, um, this isn't going to be the first issue, it won't be the last issue that happens with this building because of the way that they built it. Um, you know, we pretty much did it, I don't know how you could say, um, on a shoestring? Well, well, a shoestring, but we also, it was a butcher job. But nothing else, nothing else is glaring right now. It's well, just actually, I'd be careful about saying that my recommendation was going to be to get with the chief and do a punch list because there were some other issues with the building. And it might be good if we could go back to Durant's office with kind of everything that potentially falls under the category of, hey, we did this on a shoestring and these are the other things that are lurking behind it because I think it'd be easier to get authorization to spend it on other remediations of that initial build for that building than to try to repurpose it for the windows. I'm not saying Perhaps. that's not yeah. a, yeah, yeah. I'm no. not saying that that's not a, a meritorious project. Please don't Nothing was me said to me about any yeah. other issues. So if you know of something that's, I, that's I, I know that they've had some issues with like doors and door frames that like okay. don't either shut properly or that have shifted, you know, because of, of the, the dirt work maybe not being as good as it ought to have been or, or what have you. There's some, I, I think there's some other issues. Department did the dirt yeah, work, I know. so be careful. I, I realize that. So <laughs> uh, that was one of the places that we saved a whole bunch of money, right? But, uh, um, I want to say I think he did a fine job, so I, I want to <laughs> clarify okay. that. Just, just checking. So, uh, and it may not have anything to do with the dirt work. It could be the concrete that yeah. was used. Who yeah. knows, right? right? So, but um, I, I think we want to do a, a very thorough walkthrough with sure. the chief and the and the and the officers and make sure that there's not anything else lurking sure. beneath Makes the sense. surface. Because just because knowing how those type of appropriations work, it's going to be a lot easier to stay on the right side of the angels repurposing it to that building than it would be to try to go for the okay. windows. But we could try for that for the, as an earmark for this next year coming because they come out every year asking for potential earmarks. So if we, if we do our due diligence and have our numbers, we can make it the next thing that we put top of the wish list when, when the state comes asking what we mm -hmm. want the money for. So... Oh, did you, and you second? I second. All right, all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. I thought we voted it, but that's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we voted it twice, it's, <laughs> we're still okay. I definitely have my marching orders now. <laughs> okay, so I'll give you a motion to uh, um, uh, We might as well go into the Highway Advisory Committee. They're here to discuss that mm -hmm. without. Right, right, but that's executive session. Well, these are both our executive session. I understand that. Yeah. So I was going to make a motion to enter executive oh. session under both uh, exemption three and exemption one. The first being to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, <coughs> and the chair so declares relative to the New England Police Benevolent Association. So I declare. Okay. Uh, as well as to uh, discuss reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than the professional competence of an individual or to discuss the discipline, dismissal of, or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, individual, the individual to be discussed shall be notified in writing in public. Um, uh, a public body shall hold an open session if the individual involved requests that the session be open. Um, so I'll make a second a discussion on the second one, but do we even need to go into executive session without Pete here as I don't think yes. we can talk about 
him while he's not here. We absolutely can talk about him when he's okay. not here. We the can. person's okay. attendance is not a requirement okay. for an Perfect. executive okay. session relative okay. to, to that right. uh, section. And just to clarify, the individual was hand delivered the notification, and at this point, we've received no indication that the preference would be open session. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I gave a motion. Do you I want second it? Second. Good oh. discussion. For discussion. Yeah. All in favor? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And that we're going to. Uh, oh, roll call we're, vote. Well, first of all, we're and, and I forgot to put on the motion oh. that will be um, adjourning direct from executive session. So second. And then. All in favor? Roll call vote. Coughlin, I. KPI. Kodalski, I. That's a wrap, folks.